Rupert Murdoch's decision to exit the entertainment business and sell key assets to Disney for dollars US$66 billion in December was motivated by a simple belief. From a strategic point of view this is the right time to sell, Mr Murdoch said in an interview with the Financial Times. We are living in an age of enormous disruption. The octogenarian billionaire was convinced that even though the Fox empire he spent decades nurturing was vast, it will be able to compete with digital players like Netflix and Amazon. These internet giants have the financial strength to outmuscle traditional media companies for the best content, and truly global user bases to distribute it across. In video, Murdoch has retreated to the more familiar terrain of live news and sport, areas Netflix has said it won't touch and that on face value, look more insulated against. But what if it's not just the expensive, big-budget dramas at risk of being outmaneuvered by more nimble, digital native players? What if another important form of TV is, for want of a better phrase, about to be disrupted? At least one other famous Australian thinks that is eminently possible. If he is right, the already beaten and bruised TV establishment should be worried. Jeremy Liu raised in Perth, is one of Silicon Valley's top investors. He was made famous by an early bet on Snapchat that made his investors billions. Even though the disappearing messaging service has struggled since its stock market listing, it has become an important part of the internet video landscape. The unfolding future of TV is one of the themes on Liu's mind as he searches for his next big hit. What has started to change is that all these, internet, TV plays, they used to be supplements to regular TV, Liu told Fairfax in a recent interview, now they are increasingly becoming substitutes for regular TV, because people are cutting the cord. It's a well-known fact that Americans, weirdly, watch five hours of TV each day. Australians consume about half of that. Much of that viewing is actually passive, or companion TV, Liu argues. For example, think CNN, on in a local context, Sky News, playing while you're in the office or in an airport lounge, or breakfast TV shows while you are getting ready for work, or cooking shows while preparing dinner, sports highlights in the evening. At the moment, this companion TV is still largely produced by traditional media companies, and distributed through the traditional mechanisms of broadcast and pay TV. As consumers quit pay TV subscriptions and increasingly stare at their phones, the economics underpinning these shows are also crumbling. That, companion TV, has all historically been covered by cable, but if people are cutting the cable cord, then it is going to have to be covered by these, internet TV, plays, somehow Liu says. Liu's firm, Lightspeed Venture Partners had made various bets that tie into this theme. It has backed Cheddar, a live financial news service aimed at millennials, that is expanding into general news an HQ trivia, a Red Hot, live an interactive game show that is said to have attracted as many as 400,000 users. Both of these shows are streamed on Twitter, the social platform which has suffered its own struggles lately, but now appears to be pinning its hopes on live video.